Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Last First Date Radio, featuring interviews with experts in dating, relating, and mating in midlife. And now, here's your host, Sandy Weiner. Hello and welcome to Last First Date Radio. We are one of the top-rated shows about attracting and sustaining healthy relationships in midlife. And today, I'm going to be speaking with radio host Edward Torchy Smith about how baby boomers view life and love today. As a dating coach, many women women come to me feeling really hopeless. Um, they're, I'm like their last-ditch effort. I was just talking to a friend of mine today who's just getting into the field of helping women after divorce to regain their dignity. And I said, you know, women come to me after taking all the courses and reading all the books, and they feel like they've hit the wall. They feel like something just isn't clicking. And so when you work one-on-one with a coach like me or another dating or relationship coach, you really get that total immersion and find how to get past the wall. So a client of mine had, had described it like a marathon when you're running a marathon and you hit that wall, so you're almost there and that coaching can just get you to really find what are the missing pieces. Maybe it's your family of origin and you haven't really seen the connections between uh, your parents and the people that you that you attract into your life. And, you know, it could be that your list of what you absolutely must have in a relationship are, you know, that list is not really working for you, that you have a certain type and it hasn't been working for you so far, otherwise you'd be with your type. So you got to kind of throw the type out. Um, anyway, so really important to do this work, whether you work with me or somebody else, just to really uncover the unhealthy patterns and and whatever the blind spots are that are getting in the way of being for a woman of value, the, the women I work with, they learn to value themselves and become a woman of value. And every week I bring you a tip on how to be that woman of value. And this week's tip is your past doesn't limit you. And what I mean by that is your past happened. You, your past is what happened to you already. Many people say, well, I can't do such and such because I was brought up this way. Or, you know, I'm a scared person, so I can't take this risk um, because it hasn't worked for me in the past. Um, so if you've had bad relationships, if they haven't worked out in the past, today is a new slate. Today is a new beginning, and you can find love no matter how old you are no matter what you look like there is love out there for everyone and um, if you're if you've been in relationships where men disappeared which happens a lot and so many women write in about this so I created a guide about the top 10 reasons why men disappear so go over to my website when the show is done and uh, the website is lastfirstdate.com and you can grab that free guide um, the top 10 tips Uh, about why men pull away or disappear. And one last thing before we introduce Edward Torchy Smith, and that is that I have a private Facebook group, and if you are not yet a member, you are missing out on one of the best groups on Facebook. And I'm unashamedly saying that because... It is a group where the administrator, me, is very involved. I do Facebook Live um, video live stream every single Sunday where I talk about the the topics that really matter to all of you. So besides the fact that the conversation there is, is ongoing, all the struggles that people go through and the wins, the challenges and the wins are all being posted all throughout the day. So know that you're not alone. So the name of the group is Your Last First Date on Facebook, so please join us. Um, You have to be approved, and if I see you in there, I will check you out, and I will approve you. And now, for the moment you've been waiting for, Torchy Smith is going to come on the show. So let me tell you a little bit about him. Whatever happened to famous baby boomers who were on TV and child stars? How Baby Boomers View the World Today. Edward Torchy Smith was born with bright red hair in 1947. The nurse brought him to his mother and said, here is your little Torch, and that's how he got the name Torchy. To this day, all of his relatives and friends 
don't even know that his name is Edward. He was raised in a suburb of Cleveland called Shaker Heights, where he went to public school through 12th grade. His two children attended the Shaker school system, and um, he headed the organization of all of his high school reunions where over 600 baby boomers were in his graduating class. His celebrity connection started way back even before his children entered the entertainment business. He always had an interest in seeking a way to combine his nostalgia obsession with communications through the Internet. And besides his time with golf, he has spent his time with a passion developing his listeners associated with Baby Boomers Talk Radio. Join us now for episode number 259, How Baby Boomers View Life and Love Today. Welcome, Torchy. Welcome to myself. Boy, I felt that was my eulogy. That was great, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> I should have recorded that. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if we all had our eulogy before we died? I think oh, that definitely. Actually is, um, I, I live in really... the past, as you can see. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Other than my grandchildren and golf, uh, I love living in the old, good old happy days. And so uh, I sort of consider myself an expert in, in, in that uh, realm of things. And uh, so that's where we begin. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you interview celebrities who are baby yes, boomers and yes. um so let's let's get started with um let's first define who is a baby boomer so exactly. people who are listening know, okay? Exactly. Well, uh, of course, uh, baby boomers are people who were born right after World War II and usually considered 1947 to about 1955. And of course, there was a population explosion after that. Uh, men came home pretty horny, ready to <laughs> ready to settle down, <laughs> and uh, and there was an explosion of babies. And in that period of time, the demographics, advertising, so many things have always been geared to us because we were the big consumers, and we still are. We were losing that. Uh, certainly, in the entertainment business, they don't make movies for us anymore, really. Um, but we are still 80 million strong. Hmm. So that's what a baby boomer is. And, wow. Uh, so, um, yeah, actually they are doing a little bit more towards the baby boomer population because in in the field of relationships that I'm in, mm-hmm. the advent of divorce, you know, the rise in divorce, for those over 50 has risen, you know, tremendously in the last few years. Um, yes. They call them the gray, the gray divorces. Um, that's been one of the labels. And so uh, the, there was a show on Netflix called Grace and Frankie. I don't know if you've seen that one. My wife has seen that. She wanted me to see it. I, and I, and I, there was somebody on there I didn't like. I think it was Jane Fonda. <laughs> yeah, you but know what? I, when I first saw it, it was really um, I found both Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin and the two men who they had been married to to be very kind of caricature and yeah, um, the yeah. acting I, just really I bothered watched me. It, but I, I should have watched it, but, but I, I just can't stand Jane Fonda for some reason. <laughs> Maybe well, you know what? I, I w- it, I suggest okay. right. I hear that pol- politically, but I suggest that you give it another chance because yeah. I did, and um, it really was wonderful that this show became so popular because it was dealing with people in their seventies. Right. And, I hear my wife um, laughing all the children. time when she's watching it. <laughs> yeah. It, well, they talked about real life stuff mm-hmm. that that people who are divorcing at that age go through, exactly. or remarrying, and yep. also their yep. kids and the kids' issues. And right. so I found it to be very endearing. And actually, James right. I'll, I'll give it another try. And it's a, okay. And it, I mean, it's a subject that because my wife and I, of course, have friends are living through all that. Um, you have to understand. And people should understand that the baby boomers were raised in a different way where you stayed together and and maybe out of 30 kids in the class, maybe one or two uh, parents were divorced and the rest of mm-hmm. them may, may have been unhappy, but they stayed together for the kids' sake. So when mm-hmm. it's a little strange for baby boomers when a spouse dies or something like that happens, um, someone who has Alzheimer's, who knows what, and and have to live with somebody else. You're still looking for love and not be married. 
I have a friend mm-hmm. who's just sold his house. His wife died suddenly, and he found the, uh, another love of his life after being married since college. And and they're moving in together, but they're not getting married. And that's like, oh my god, <laughs> you know, that, that's a big <laughs> deal, <laughs> you know, for baby boomers, and they're not married. But you know, why get married? Uh, they have a relationship, and uh, it's legally, uh, they both have funds, and and that that's tough on the children, on both sides. And gosh, I, yeah. I, I don't know. If our parents never talked about that at all. So. Yeah, it's a whole different generation, and it's a it's a good point that you bring up because the baby boomers are now not getting remarried often. I, most of my yeah. clients are not interested in marriage; no, they're interested I would never in a long term. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, some do. So I actually had a post on my blog yesterday about prenups, and um, Mm -hmm. I had done a little video for Bottom Line Inc. about prenups and whether prenups are necessary when you remarry. And (laughs) so you can go over to my blog and read that. But I think, you know, if if people do remarry, they're much smarter and they talk about things much more, hopefully. yeah, so so these are some issues, the Alzheimer's, the different they're living longer. So w- what are some some issues that baby boomers are facing today and um I know that you interview a lot of celebrities. So if you want to mm-hmm. even talk about some of the celebrities that you know and what some of the sure. issues that they're facing. Sure. Well, a lot of them have money problems <laughs> like everybody else, former celebrities and uh, living off of uh their popularity, they're doing signature shows and trying to earn money. And I think this is very, very important, and I can't stress this enough. If I interview somebody and, uh, oh, my gosh, they must be multimillionaire, their their shows are on all the time or, or whatever, or they had rich parents, if they're not celebrities. I came from an area called Shaker Heights, which was the wealthiest suburb of the United States mm-hmm. and at that time. And a doctor who earned a million dollars and left it, well, 19, let's say 1970. He left a million dollars. Oh, my gosh, you have enough money for the rest of your life. Well, half went to the wife, had two kids. They split it, and they tried to live off of it. You can't live off a million dollars for the rest of your life, you know, and have the same style you had when you were a kid. So... Money became very important uh, with baby boomers because of inflation. And inflation was our number one problem. And that's what I want to stress. Uh, a good baby boomer who was on uh, the Mickey Mouse Club got uh, $600 a week, and they had to work six days a week, those original Mouseketeers. And they're mm-hmm. in reruns. They get no money, no residuals. And they had to work on Saturdays. They had to go up and down Disneyland and march. <laughs> with the with the Disney parade, and uh, it wasn't that Walt Disney was uh, well. He he wasn't as rich as people think when he started Disneyland, but you know, six hundred dollars was was really good pay for a kid. And some of the parents had to live off that. Their their parents they were supporting their parents, and that is a very unusual thing with celebrities. But they all had something in common. They're earning money for their parents in those days, and then it stops and. The money that they thought they really had, a lot of money, wasn't there. So, so uh, yeah, that's 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 the sad part and the reality of of people from the past. Who today, I think the celebrities uh, and especially women uh, can get so much money that they they don't need men. <laughs> that they think like mm-hmm. in the old days, they thought, oh, I got to have a a man to support me. And of course, they don't need that anymore. It's women's lib, and it's a whole different world. But uh, Money was a big problem with baby boomers because of inflation. A lot of wealth was mm-hmm. taken away, and and they're working longer, and they don't have the skills that the millenniums have. When when you have a, a sales account, and you've been working with a company for thirty years, and uh, you and and your maybe main income is selling from Walmart, they could fire you and have three people take that job and not make the commission you made or, or whatever. In that respect, so um, and millenniums are sometimes uh, coming up with uh, new ideas, and and they're younger, and uh, of course uh, have more skills in computers, and that's a big problem. So well, yeah, but a lot of 
a lot of baby boomers think that because they didn't grow up with computers, they right. have to act like yeah. they know nothing. And <laughs> I am I defy every every stereotype about technology and being 61. I um I, I mean I know more than my kids do because I taught myself and I made sure right. that I wasn't going to be a victim of it. So I you know I really encourage people who are older to not get stuck but to actually find ways to learn technology because I I agree with that so much yeah. and and I'm always fighting that with my friends and it, it seems like the baby but I I'm 70 years old. I was born in 1947. Mhm. I hope I don't sound it. I hope I don't look it. <laughs> <laughs> you sound really young and youthful. And, and and I am. And one reason why I was able to do so much with uh, interviewing celebrities is I did have the technology. I know about Facebook. I know how to do an email blast. I I know I know how to edit. I I I do my own sound. I, mm-hmm. I could do all that. And one reason is, of course, be I had a business and I had to learn it myself too. But I had friends. Oh no, no, no! You know, they're like, and anybody five years older, forget it. They, they mm-hmm. can barely do email. But everybody about ten years younger than me are still savvy enough. You know, the, it, it's it's it, we were on the cusp there. there the, that baby boomer generation right there uh, is is where somewhere the, where the technology uh, issues begin, and and again, like you said, they're afraid of it. So yeah. I don't know what so to do about that. but uh, uh, You know what? People stay stuck, and there are people who are stuck about a lot of things, and then there are people who say there are no obstacles. I'm going to learn how to overcome everything. So I think, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm always encouraging people to overcome their obstacles. That's a big part of my coaching, and um, I use a lot of technology in my communication with my clients. So if they don't know how to open a Google document or to mm-hmm. speak mm-hmm. to me through video conferencing, um you know, to to set timers and, their, you know, set their calendar reminders and stuff like that, then, you know, I work with them a little bit to help them. I have screenshots and, you know, little really? videos to explain things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm telling you, I, it's like people lose things. They just, it just, you want to have a smooth relationship with people. You've got to really help them to get yeah. on board. Um, but let's get back to celebrity issues sure. that, you know, the baby boomers are facing. So. Sure. Um, what are you mentioned something about Geraldo being a friend of yours and um, that he's facing some struggles? <laughs> well, I, I don't know if he's facing struggles, but he's he's up there in age. Um, Geraldo married a girl uh, here in Cleveland who um, is my daughter's best friend, and <laughs> okay. Geraldo married uh, a girl who. Uh, I'm friends with the parents as well. We're very close. And I actually went to high school with Geraldo's mother-in-law. And my daughter, you know, the fact that, <laughs> let's see, she's 41 now. He's 73. Um, so he's been with her 10 years, 11 years. And when that started, of course, uh, <laughs> her name is Erica. Uh, Erica's father wouldn't even talk to her. I mean, it, was, it got really bad. And I kid Geraldo all the time because I was partially responsible. I was the one that talked to her father into taking the internship and not getting paid. I said, you have a son at Harvard. You, you can't afford to have her an internship one summer at CNN. He was at CNN that, and then it goes mm. way back. So uh, he shelled out the money because I had my daughter do the same thing. I said, it's like the law school. It's, you know, uh, I got her in Hollywood uh, through a connection of mine to be a, a PA, a production assistant, and that's how they start, and uh, with very little money or no money. So she met Geraldo, and uh, <laughs> he fell in love with her. And, uh, of course, Geraldo had been married four times before. He eventually, it's a very long story, won over the parents. And uh, now that he's getting up in age, he's moving to Cleveland. Uh, to be, uh, she wants to move back here. They have a child, 11 years old, and you know what? It works. They, he really is in love with her, and she is really in love with him. And it's been the longest relationship he's ever had. I know he's been married four times, so there was, you know, oh my gosh, <laughs> the parents were like livid almost, and and now it's all smoothed over, and and it really works. Uh, so you never know. Uh, talking about relationships like that, 
Um, Why do you think it works? Pardon? Why do you think this relationship is working? Well, I'll tell you something. Um, Because he changed. I mean, if you, he he admits he really didn't raise his kids properly. Um, I've been with him when uh, sometimes uh, all of a sudden something happens and he just gets up and leaves the table and gets on a plane and goes someplace because he has to be there first. And that's and and he does that less and less now because he wants to raise his daughter the proper way and. Um, so he wasn't running off to Afghanistan and places like that. And he didn't have to be the big stud. Um, he still is very youthful. And uh, I don't know. Her, she, she just fell in love with him and, and the whole thing. And, and they have a daughter, that, and it just works. I, I, you're the expert. Mm. I don't know <laughs> exactly. But, it, <laughs> well, but I don't, somehow I don't, it works. I don't Nobody know him. Nobody gave him a chance. Nobody. I mean, they said, oh, forget this. He's, you know, he he didn't cheat on her, you know, she, like he did all of his other wives, and and uh, but I tell you, he's a real mensch, <laughs> if you know that word mm. out there. Mm-hmm. He supports all his wives. He's made a lot of money. He he's not a deadbeat father. Um, he has taken one of his sons that was in Albuquerque, New Mexico, that um. Uh, uh, I guess this kid was born out of wedlock. I mean, he never married this woman, and and he's raised him, uh, and financially in every other way. He cares for all his kids now, and he didn't have that about him uh, back when he was doing Al Capone's too. So, um, you so know, part of it, it is that his his work is not as primary in his life. He's valuing family right. more than work. Exactly. Or he worked and, around and it. Actually, he was able to sign contracts where. Uh, he wouldn't do the things he had to do to get known. You know, I mean, uh, Geraldo went broke. I don't think people realize that Geraldo got fired, and he was totally broke when he did Al Capone's Tomb, that show, and it was the highest-rated show, and he only got $40,000 for it. Mm -hmm. And I think he learned how to be part of show business then. He knew he was not Walter Cronkite. And to, to... to be Geraldo, whoever he that name is, he had to be part of the story and give up his life and get known, and that's what he did. Mm. So, uh, yeah, well, this is um, this is actually something that I see a lot with boomers um, that people who are dating after fifty, sixty, that there are changes that happen. You're getting close to the end of your life. There's you're closer. You're seeing mm-hmm. what really matters. Mm-hmm. You've lived through a lot of experiences and you stop focusing on the small stuff. I mean, nobody wants to get to the end of their life and, and, you know, say, I wish I worked harder. I mean, that's, that's the classic line. And Mm -hmm. so it's, it's really when you start to value relationships and you realize the mistakes you made. So for those who have done that, love is possible. And, you know, there is a huge age range, age difference here. And, um, we talk about that a lot in my practice also, that that age doesn't have to matter. You know, you have to find common ground. You have to find common values. Don't always find it with somebody with a 30-year age difference, but it can work as we see here, you know, even with somebody who failed at marriage three times before. Right. Four times. Right. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I, I'd have to read the book again but uh, and ask him, but... Uh, he had four relationships, and I think three of them he married, and four he just lived with her. I, I, I forget how mm. it goes, but uh, yeah, I mean he has four kids from other marriages, and and he looks, I, I, he's closer with them now than he was before, and mm-hmm. uh, you know he he is a yeah. changed person, and she did change him. Mm-hmm. I mean he wouldn't he wouldn't be moving to Cleveland if it wasn't for her, uh, and, mm. you know, and and he's going to go back and forth, he's going to try it, and eventually he's going to settle here, you know, full time. So, for her. So, so what, what are what are some of the? Sorry, um, yeah. just just curious about some other celebrities that you've interviewed. Sure. What what are sure. some of the? What are some are of the highlights? Four women or both? Yeah, any any like what are some of the okay. big takeaways or bit, most surprising things you've learned? Oh, let's see. Um, well. Each each one has their own story, and uh, I know you like women's issues. I mean, 
it was tougher for women, I think, to adjust uh, to a life of being a non-celebrity than men, and and men were different about it. <laughs> Some, you know, just turned and became substance abuse people, um, mm. and but I, here's one: uh, Mary Elizabeth McDowell. She was one of the nicest people. She was on the Waltons. A uh, little redheaded girl on the Waltons, and they told her, "You need breast implants if you want to. You 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 look too innocent, and get breast implants if you want to be in show business anymore." And eventually, her breast implants almost caused her to die. She read a book about it. She's she's actually gone to Congress and um, been uh, well, like one of those committees that uh, was uh, a subject of uh, scrutiny there, and as and just she found a cause. And um, mm. so I, I just thought that was very interesting. I mean, that, that's uh, more interesting than some of the uh, highlights uh, of her acting career, although she did, you know, do acting afterwards. But uh, I guess The Waltons was her best-known part. Um, mm. mm-hmm. there, there was, there's some things uh, that are very sad, um, and yet uh, there was the girl from Father Does Best, uh, she was known as Kitten, and she was one of the early uh, with Robert Young. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. and by the way, a lot of these programs are being repeated on MeTV on markets in the in the major cities, and you can see uh-huh. them all again. They're being repeated. And this girl, Kitten, um, I mean, she just turned to, almost to be a street person. I mean, it was just terrible. I don't even want to go into it, but. She found God, and now she has a ministry, and I met her, and I was with her at a signature show. We did a little interview, and, and, and she was fine. She, if, in the old days, she didn't want to talk about being on Father Knows Best, and now she's proud of it because uh, she was mm. some of the best actors. And, and then there's uh, a <laughs> uh, Leave it to Beaver show. Everybody knows Leave it to Beaver. And there was mm-hmm. a girl on there. Who uh, she was on the, something like fifty or seventy episodes, and she was the brat that always teased Beaver in class, and um, she had no career after that. She became a real estate agent, and uh, I recently interviewed her. Her her she was known. Uh, oh God, I can't think of the name now. But um, her real name is Jerry Weil, and she was Judy Hensler. And if I showed any baby boomer the picture, she'd say, oh, yeah, I remember her. And, she, and she'd, she'd be the tease of the class. And, oh, Miss Landers, Beaver did this. And, you know, uh, anyways, <laughs> I reunited. I, I was the one, right now, I'm re- getting her to do a signature show. I'm like her manager almost. I found her. Oh. And um, she's going to be at a signature show. And I'm going to go there in Hollywood. It's actually at the, at the uh, L.A. airport, uh, the west end at the L.A. airport, and they have like 75 celebrities there from the past. And uh, <clears throat> she's going to be with Beaver and Tony Dow, which was Wally, and I, I got them uh, all re- reunited again. And, oh, cool. Uh, I was proud of that one. <laughs> but uh, That's awesome. They, they find their lives, you know, it's it's rough. Um I, I've interviewed a lot of people, who, not a lot, but uh, people who have starred with Elvis. Elvis pictures always had the most beautiful women, if you remember, and mm-hmm. uh, and then they would disappear. <laughs> so mm. Most of them, you know, and once you started an Elvis picture, that that, that was about it. <laughs> uh, mm. But some of them were on Star Trek. Um, they found their way. Um, <clears throat> nothing as big as uh, that. And her one of them that I like a lot. Her name is Celeste Yarnell, and uh, she was on Elvis' uh, movie. Absolutely beautiful. C E L E S T E Yarnell Y A Y A R N A L L two L's. And when you see her, I mean, I don't think women today are as pretty as the women of the '60s or the '50s. I just, I just don't see it, <laughs> especially mm-hmm. the movie stars. She was absolutely gorgeous, and um, and she still is today. She she, she mm-hmm. even though she's had cancer, and now uh, she goes to these signature shows, and especially the Star Trek people. But they they're close. They all kept close. Um, 
and uh, they're just stars. They just they just uh, they, they didn't have to uh, do some of the stuff on stage that some of the women do today. <laughs> Let me put it that mm-hmm. way. So. Yeah, exactly. It was a, it was a cleaner time. And my son, yes. who's 26, and um, we watch a lot of the old time shows, and he he really has an old soul. And he says, "Boy, you know, I just love." the way people lived back then because there was yeah. less cursing, there was more clothes on people's bodies. We you know, people were polite and kind to each other and it's really a different it's a whole different era. Yeah. Um so thank you so much for coming on the show today oh. and sharing these really interesting stories and uh I'd like you to just share how people can find your show. Sure. If you well first of all the the show's on iHeartRadio if you go to iHeartRadio and type in Baby Boomers Talk Radio, uh, it'll come up. Or they're also archived at my website, www.babyboomerstalkradio.com. Or just Google Torchy Smith. <laughs> I'm all over the place on there. Not Torchy Smith. Right. That's somebody else. Not Torch- I'm the only Torchy Smith out there. Um and uh, there used to be a Torchy Blaine from the comics in the 1920s. Other than that, you'll, you'll, you'll find it. <laughs> okay. Well, so. thank you so much. This has been a delight, okay. Torchy. And okay. uh, best of luck to you. And keep okay. doing boomer work. <laughs> okay, Sandy. Thank <laughs> and you. thanks, everybody, for, the good old for joining. Thank you. Okay. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye.